What does a calendar mean to you? How big a role does it play in your life? What kind of calendar do you use to organize yourself? On the first day of 2013, we take a look at calendars and what they mean to us. As the end of the year approaches and the new year begins, so do New Year resolutions and all kinds of new plans. Calendars and diaries are items that help us keep track of our goals and plan our schedules. Bookstores are one of the most common and accessible places to purchase calendars and diaries. There is a large assortment to choose from. But choosing a calendar and diary is a very personal choice. What are some of the most popular ones that sell very well? Usually the bestseller will be the desktop calendar because actually inside the people can actually mark like your appointment and all that, you can straight away see it and don't, it won't occupy a lot of space. And then for wall calendar lately that sell well is those that more than 12 months, which is 16 months calendar. To attract different types of consumers, different colors and designs are available to appeal to the different tastes. For example, there are diaries with heart-shaped designs that appeal to the teenagers. This particular design also has love poems inside. Bright colors such as these are also designed to target a younger consumer. Scenic designs are also very popular and some have even sold out already. Actually, it's the one with scenery that sell very well and then followed by, uh, we'll be surprised, those retro style uh, transportation like mobile, classic car, that are actually the one that sell very well. Calendars that feature beautiful artwork or photography can still be used even when the year is over. For the calendar parts, right, what we, we do notice is, is beside it act as a calendar, it also can be part of the collection because um, the artwork is very nice. After the, the year end, you can actually tear off and flame it up. Some calendars, like this one, even have daily craft activities to try. Like this are our craft form. Uh, every day they have a project for you, assignment for you. So every day it's um, sort of extra activity for them. This is they say will value for money. Okay, so this is um, the uniqueness of the picture day calendar. But it is still the very basic, classic and simple design with easy to read layouts that sell the best. Our number one diary bestseller will still be this type, this type, the executive type, you know, the one that we say the colour not so interesting. But um, actually, like, um, coming soon, we will believe, like this type, the monologue type will pick up very well. Because if you notice the paper, okay, it's actually very suitable if you read it under those uh, dim light. It's very comfortable for your eyes itself. And then, um, of course, the, the style is still have a string. It can protect your privacy somehow because it's tied up. Yeah. Many companies also produce their own calendars yearly as a marketing and branding tool. MPH's calendar for this year features artwork designed by Malaysian artist Boy Chi Ming. There are also calendars published by magazines in their year-end editions. One popular calendar is by the men's magazine FHM, featuring gorgeous ladies from Malaysia. Nadia Heng is one of the stunning girls featured in the FHM 2013 calendar. She was nominated as one of the 100 most wanted women in the world by FHM magazine last year in December, which led her to being one of their calendar girls. 
I was really, really uh, uh, flattered when I found out because, I mean, uh, I, think that, I think it's a mixture. It's a combination of international stars and, of course, um, Malaysian women. So it's definitely an honor to be on that list. Uh, if you've seen the women on the list, you know, it, it, it's quite an honor. <laughs> Nadia is featured in the month of August on the calendar and is excited by this new experience and the end result produced by the photographer. It was really exciting because I've never been on a calendar before and uh, this is a great opportunity for me. Um, and uh, I love the shots that were done. All the girls basically have this huge blown up picture. This is mine for the month of August, so I'm very happy with it. Since she has appeared in the calendar, it has definitely raised her profile. I actually had somebody come up to me yesterday uh, and uh, they just bought the new um, KL Lifestyle magazine, which I was on the cover of, and he was saying, ah, you know, if I'd known you were going to be here, I'd brought my, <laughs> I would have brought my magazine, you know, so that, so that, so that I could ask you to sign it. But um, I've had some requests on Twitter, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was kind of strange, but it's very flattering, and, uh, you know, thank you to, to all the support um, out there, yeah. The confidence she has felt has led her to make some ambitious New Year resolutions. For my New Year's resolution, uh, well, I have to say it's probably going to be doing more things that I really enjoy, um, pushing the envelope, trying to do more things that I'm not necessarily accustomed to, more things that I'm not used to, uh, because I think it's really important, especially in your younger days or when you're in your, your prime, so to speak, to um, get out of your comfort zone and to do things that you wouldn't normally do, um, because you'd be surprised what a world of opportunities out there and what sort of things you can discover, you know, so that, that's going to be my news resolution. Besides the Western calendar we use, Chinese calendars are also popular. After the break, we take a look at how they're printed and how to read them. The Tungsun calendar is one of the oldest Chinese calendars that has been adapted to accommodate Malaysian society. It's combined with the Gregorian calendar, the Muslim calendar, the solar system calendar, and lastly, the lunar calendar. Every page of the Tungsun calendar is a summary of the particular date in the Tungsun encyclopedia. Stephen Yeo, a printer, shares with us what the calendar means to his customers. Other than serving as a reminder of the date, it is also printed elaborately and given as a gift. Over the years, the size and design has changed to suit customers' demands. This year, Stephen is printing his calendar in three paper sizes, 8 to 9K, 16K and 32K. The 16K is the most popular for its moderate size. In the past, plates were used to carve their clients' details, but now the plate is replaced with an attached cardboard with a colorful cover. For many Chinese merchants, it's a popular gift for their clients. <laughs> Feng Sui also heavily influences the Chinese community's decisions. To find out more what the year of the water snake holds for everyone, we spoke to Feng Shui expert Kenny Ho. According to Kenny, people should be prepared for changes as there will be a lot of new systems and policies introduced this year. He predicts that most of this uncertainty will happen before early June. From June onwards, he sees a strong rise in property prices and those who are holding many properties will benefit from it. 
He adds that other industries that will also do well are infrastructure, petroleum, finance and entertainment. However, wood and water industries such as timber and beverages will face challenges. As for the weather, it will be more stable compared to last year. For the layman, looking at the calendar may seem confusing. However, there is a system to it with various bad and good activities that can be carried out on any particular day. We asked Kenny to help us decipher the calendar. For every 12 days, there will be one broken day where all activities should be avoided except for demolishing houses or buildings. Although the number 8 is an auspicious figure for the Chinese, it clashes with people who are born on certain days. In the calendar, it offers a guide to these days. Only clashes with those who are born in the year of the uh, red because it is a horse year. Uh, this one also good. Huh? It, it, this is a horse year. The day itself is a horse day. <coughs> horse day clashing with what? Well, some people do not know. Uh, clash with the rat, so rat person cannot use, even though it's a good date. And <coughs> if they want to use, what can they use? They can use it for, <coughs> this is what? To do offering, do prayer to their ancestors, <coughs> and also to go to school, and also many others, actually there are others, huh? <coughs> this is too abstract, abstract, right? abstract and it should not be used for marriage even though it's good but not suitable for marriage some people call it far, the farmer's calendar mm -hmm. no meaning mm -hmm. no, the farmer's calendar because during the old ancient times <coughs> especially because in this book there is a page which is very important to them <coughs> this is the farmer will refer you can see the weather forecast for the particular year the coming year whether the year will be having more water or what. For example, during this year, this person is not wearing a shoe. That means, uh, that means what? It's not it hot. Uh, not, not, not so, do not need to wear the shoes. Uh, not so much of water. However, Kenny advises us not to take the calendar too literally, as it will lead to one becoming too superstitious. How does modern technology affect the use of calendars now? We find out after the break. Now, with modern technology and gadgets such as smartphones and laptops, online digital calendars such as Google Calendars attract millions of users worldwide. Google Calendar was launched around 2005, uh, along the same time as Gmail. Uh, of course, at that time, Gmail and Calendar were both uh, on beta, and we invited uh, people to try it out and also invite uh, their friends. Since then, it's grown to about 450 million active users worldwide today, uh, and these 450 million users actively share calendars between each other, some of them, to synchronize schedules, uh, to share um, tasks, and to basically do uh, group messaging. Uh, for you know either personal or professional matters. And what is the appeal of Google Calendars that makes it so popular? Well, I actually think because it works across devices, because all of your schedule is on the cloud, so to speak. So whatever you update on your laptop is reflected on your smartphone, is reflected on your tablet, is reflected on any other PC or device that you might have. So as long as you're logged into Google. Uh, any update from any device is instantly reflected in the other devices. Additional practical functions have been added on and you can choose how much or how little information you want on your calendar. Reminders are always convenient too. One of the things that uh, we found out about like when people want to do calendaring is it, like they like reminders. Um, and, you know, most of the time they have to either put it in their phone, so why not have it straight in the calendar, right? So because of that, we've got add-on calendars that you can also sync along with your calendar. This includes uh, national holidays of any country that you might want. Uh, alternative uh, calendars like maybe the Hijra calendar or Hebrew calendar. 
Um, you also can have uh, the schedule of your favorite sports teams, so you will never miss uh, when they play or if they play live or it's not live. So at least you'll know in your calendar, oh, okay, at 3 a.m. your favorite team is actually playing, so you're not going to miss that. So you can have all those calendars overlap in different colors, so it's nice and easy on the eye. And all you do is check your phone or check your desktop, and you know, you'll never miss uh, any important dates anymore. There are also additional features that can be tested out if you are interested in experimenting a little bit with your Google Calendar. If you are one of those who are like early adopter types and really experimental types, there's a tab in Calendar it's called Labs where you can test out all the new features that we're testing and we're not sure whether we want to like release yet, but you can try it out. It's called Calendar. It's under the Labs uh, tab. So, you know, there's some really interesting stuff there. The rise in electronic calendars isn't the end for printers, who print the traditional calendars we use. Karen has been helping out in the family printing business since 2001. Her company prints another type of calendar that many call the horse racing calendar, as it has all the Malaysian holidays, including the horse racing dates. The calendar is unique to Malaysia as it also incorporates other calendar systems. The calendar is in an easy to read format with all the important dates highlighted. Each calendar also comes with a red paper covering, which has a special meaning. The horse racing calendar is a popular gift that businesses hand out to their clients. Lung, the owner of the shop, decided to start giving out the calendars this year after seeing how popular they were. For Lung, he finds the design of the calendar practical in use. The calendar also helps him manage his stock orders. During the school holidays, he will order more and order less during the 15th day of each lunar calendar month, as many Chinese are vegetarians on that day. Has the introduction of digital calendars affected the traditional styles of the calendar industry? Should they be concerned? At first, we have uh, we are a bit skeptical, but of course, um, our supplier they actually um, did their own study and research. That's why they will come out uh, in terms of the design. They win over by the design, like the fancy type, you know, um, the color, the color, different color type, you know, like a black cool color one and then um, of course um, like the added value like those um, padded so uh, we are not so worried because we believe uh, we will still be follower on this so there are digital calendars like Google calendars and all kinds of printed calendars you are spoiled for choice and can have easy access to all kinds of information through the various calendars 
However, despite our modern days with cool phones and smart gadgets, the traditional calendar, whether in the form of a desktop calendar, wall calendar or a diary, is still a reliable favourite. Although now there's a lot of uh, gadgets, you know, you have a lot of uh, high-tech devices, your smartphone and all that, but we notice people will still buy the diaries, especially like you say, the senior age, because uh, when you're running out of time, you want to jot down the things quickly, it's still the diaries that help you a lot. Sometimes, you know, your phone battery might die, you might be out of power, you still want to use some of those hard copy calendars, it's still useful, you know, uh, in certain times. As we discard last year's calendar to make way for this year's calendar, give a thought to how this simple yet significant book helps us mark the passing of time.